Ghana's school will reopen partly as the country gradually begins to reopen following a week, weeks-long shutdown aimed at curbing the spread of COVID-19. In a televised address on Sunday evening, Ghana's President Nana Kufuado announced various measures aimed at easing restrictions. The West African country schools will reopen their doors to final year students scheduled to take place to take their last exams this year. President Akufuado also announced an indefinite extension of non-essential foreign travel, with the exception of evacuations of Ghanaians that are stranded abroad. These travelers will, however, have to stay in mandatory quarantine upon their arrival in the country. We're now joined by Petulia Mutewana from South Africa and Seth Oteng, the Executive Director, Youth Bridge Foundation, African Youth and Governance Convergence from Ghana. Thank you both for joining us on the news. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you so much for having me as well. Pleasure to have you both. Uh, Bettina, let's start with you. It seems that schools are reopening. Um, what's your assessment? Is it wise, considering we, you, the country still has some cases? Well, um, schools have to actually reopen at some point. Uh, I mean, we understand that human beings are social by nature, and so this includes learning. Uh, so online learning is a bit um, of a problem for most of our learners, given that South Africa and inequalities. So online learning, just a minority can really um, benefit from it. So um, schools have to open, and um, South Africa has suspended the reopening of schools um, only on the 8th of, 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 of June. That's when schools will reopen uh, uh, using the phase-in approach, so grade 12 and grade 7s. Um, will be uh, phased in on the 8th of June. Um, the Department of Basic Education have put in certain measures in place, um, the health and, and, and safety precautions that all schools have to strictly adhere to so that they can do the phasing approach of learners as from the 8th of June. All right, let's come to you, Seth. What are the preparations being made towards, you know, getting the schools started again? And is it assuring enough, reassuring enough for you? Um, I think, um, as Petina rightly mentioned, life must move on. And uh, we've come to accept the fact that we are in a new normal. So um, examples have been, have been cited with the HIV AIDS, I mean, that we'll have to live with it for now. Um, you can't have schools closed for two years. So in Ghana, what has been done is some um, phased strategies, um, allowing the final year students to go in now um, to further instructions. So I would say it is important that they return and we'll have to gradually get used to the new normal. I think it's in place. That divergence initial concern, that is uh, to be expected. But I think we'll grow to accept it. All right, Petunia, what, what are the new um, advancements in teaching in um, your country that you will see, that you expect to see in the transition uh, back to classroom? What has happened during the period of this pandemic that will be transferred to the um, classroom? Well, Obviously, now that um, most learners had to try and maneuver through the new way of living, which was um, online learning, um, this is something that only a certain portion of learners um, have access to. But then I would still wish those that have access to online learning and have mastered it should still carry on into classes as we move on to the new normal, because I find it as very much beneficial to merge um, um, the, the innovative part that technology brought that we witnessed while we were on lockdown that we had to learn um, online, as well as the social interaction that schools have to offer. So matching the two is very beneficial. And I would like to see that um, being considered when we go back to, uh, for the new normal as soon as the schools reopen officially on the 8th of, of June. Because it's very much important. I mean, online learning and the use of technology within the classroom, like. For example, my daughter had um, to to engage with her learners, uh, with her with her with her with her classmates instead um, on on here at home, and then so she made use of uh, technology where she was in charge of her own um, of her own learning, and so that brought a different side 
of, of herself. Because while learners are in charge of their own learning, that's when they learn more, actually, because it brings about their motivation. And All so right, I uh, thought... Patinia, uh, we're, we're really pressed for time. I would say, uh, please continue to enlighten us. But we'd like to get a perspective from Ghana, from CERT as well. Um, what aspects of this season have you uh, found beneficial and you would also carry to uh, the schools now that they're opening? Um, let me say that as much as technology has been ad, um, identified as a critical component, um, COVID-19 has equally exposed the wide range of education inequalities, as well as the digital divide gap we have all in Ghana and all across Africa. So it is important to recognize that not every community can assess the technology um, even if they are available, reliability of the data is it's, it's, it's not working. Even in the cities, it's difficult. Now, the radio platforms we identified through a tripartite support with the Talo um, Oil Ghana Limited to finance and working with the existing teachers um, in the communities, the radio has been a useful tool to bring classroom lessons to the homes. Let me say that in Ghana, you have the radios with a wider um, coverage, but they are the community FM stations who speak their local languages. So we get them to pick the feed from the larger radio stations who are able to appeal to the parents to get their awards. So radio we've identified to be the, the gap that um, helps in bridging the gap, the inequality, um, education inequality, as well as the digital divide gaps. All right, so Seth. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry. Thank you so much. I kept interrupting. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the news. We appreciate uh, your insight to what's happening in uh, Ghana. Thank you for having us. And also, Petunia, thank you for joining us all the way from South Africa. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure.